morning. The word of the Lord this morning. If you would, I want you to turn your Bibles with me to the book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 18 verses 1 through 6 is what we're going to read this morning. The word of the Lord. Old Testament reading, book of Jeremiah chapter 18 verses 1 through 6. I want you to stand with me as we read the word of God this morning. Jeremiah 18 verses 1 through 6. Amen when you're there. Amen. Amen. The word of the Lord. It says, The word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Arise and go down to the potter's house, and there I will cause thee to hear my words. Then I went down to the potter's house, and behold, he wrought a work on the wheels. And the vessel he made of clay was marred in the hands of the potter, so he made it another vessel. And it seemed good to the potter to make it. Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, O house of Israel, cannot I do this? Can I do, can I, cannot I do with you as this potter? Said the Lord. Behold, as the clay is in the potter's hand, so are ye in my hands, O house of Israel. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord this morning. And I just want to focus on this particular piece of scripture. As a matter of fact, we visit this message. God is speaking to the prophet Jeremiah. And God tells Jeremiah that I am the Lord. I am the potter. You are the clay. And I want you to understand that in verse 6 where it says, and behold, the Lord said, as the clay is in the potter's hands, so are you in my hands. We are all in God's hands. Amen? Amen. Every single one of you are molded and shaped by God. Amen? Amen? And if God needs to mold or reshape you, let him have his way. Amen? Amen. And that's what we're going to talk about this morning. God. The master potter. That's my topic for you this morning. The master potter. In other words, God is going to shape you this morning. He's going to reshape you. Amen? Amen. God told Jeremiah, go down to the potter's house and there I will speak to you. So the prophet goes down to the potter's house. And God is using this anal analogy. He's going to allow you to see this visual example of how he can mold you again, how he can make you over again. Amen? Amen? God is the potter and we are God's creation. We are the clay in his hands. Amen? Amen. And so in, our, in, in, in God's hands, we are God's clay. He can shape us. He can reshape us. He can mold us. You know, he can make us whatever he wants us to be. But we have to have a willing spirit. Amen? God says he's ready to reshape somebody this morning. Amen. God's in charge. Is God in charge of anybody's life this morning? Yes. Amen. 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 So the clay is at the potter's wheel, and the potter's wheel is spinning around. The wheel of the Lord is this world that we're in, you know. And sometimes as this world is spinning, as the world spins sometimes, sometimes the, the, the world spins so fast, so rough. It mars some of us, you know. It, it, it gets us bent out of shape. But God is the master potter, and he's ready to mold you and shape you and reshape you all over again. Amen? It's good to have God in your life. Amen? The wheel is the world. Amen? And we're going around on this wheel, you know. But the, And verse 4 says that the vessel that was made of clay was marred in the potter's hand, so he made another vessel. In other words, he made it over again. So if, if, if you've got some things going on in your life, where this world, where sin and corruption has, has, has marred you, God is ready to reshape you again. God is ready to mold you again. God is ready to make you over again. Amen? Can I get a witness this morning? Amen? <laughs> The, 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 prob the problem with some people, they don't want to be made over again, amen? Yeah, I like myself just the way I am, amen? God can remake you, amen? God can reshape you. God can remold you, amen? You know? 
And then, you know, that's what, they, they, some people are just fine in their flaws. You know, I, I'm good the way I am. No, as long as I'm doing it, I want God's hands on my life. Amen. Anybody want God's hand? Yeah, I want. I, yeah, you're in the potter's hand. And guess what? This morning, you're in the potter's house. Amen. 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 Yeah. David said in Psalm 100, said, it is good. It is God who made us and not we ourselves. So God makes us. God makes us and molds us. Amen. Just like the potter. When the clay becomes marred and ruined, God can reshape you into something new. Amen. He can shape you into something new. Behold, the clay is in the potter's hand. We are in God's hands. And if you're watching me right now, you've got to realize that you're in God's hands. And God can reshape you. God can remold you. God can make you over again. Amen? Amen. And you know, Jesus says something. He said, unless a man is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Amen? Being born again is being reshaped. It's being molded again. Amen? God made you and God will make you over. Amen? Because the world can be rough. So the, the trials and the tribulations that we go through sometimes can bend us out of shape. But when you get bent out of shape, when you get marred by uh, the trials of this world that we live in, God is ready to reshape you. The potter is ready to make you over again. And who am I talking about? I'm talking about the master potter. Amen. God is the master potter. You know, in the book of Genesis, God did something strange. You know, God spoke things into existence. I mean, when, when he started making the earth and everything, he just spoke things into existence. Amen. When God said in, 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 in the book of Genesis, he said, let there be light. And there was light. And God said, let there be an earth. And let there be grass. And let there be water. He said, let there be all these things. And he spoke these things into existence. Amen. But unlike all of the inanimate things that God did when he just spoke them into existence, when he got ready for man, when it got time to make you, when it got time for him to, 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 to make some clay, he didn't say to man, you know, he didn't just speak you. What he did was, he said, let us make man. Let us make man in our image, in our likeness. We were molded and shaped in the image of God. He didn't say, let there be man. He reached into the earth and he grabbed the clay, the dust of the earth, and he shaped it and he formed it. And then he breathed into man the breath of life and man became a living soul. Give us the praise of God. We are in the potter's hand. You know, the Lord formed man from the dust of the earth, breathed into it. The breath of life. You have the breath of life into you, you in you, inside of you. Amen. And that's powerful. God didn't just speak you. God made you. He shaped you. And guess what? He'll make you over again. Amen? Amen. Amen. Yeah, yeah. God fashioned you from the dust of the earth. And he stepped back and he looked at it and said, ooh, that is good. You are good in God's sight. Amen? You are beautiful in God's sight. But guess what? Satan don't like that. Amen? As a matter of fact, Satan got so bent out of shape, he, he allowed himself to think more of himself than he should have thought. Amen? And God cast him out of the heavens. Amen? Threw him into the earth. Satan was marred by temptation. Satan was marred by sin and chose to stay that way. He didn't want God. He still doesn't want God to have anything. And guess what? Satan don't want God to have anything to do with you. He don't want you to have anything to do with God. If you bent over and you got some things going on in your life that just ain't right, Satan wants you to stay that way. But God wants you to stand up. God wants you to walk. God wants you to mold. God wants to mold you and reshape you. God said, look, even if, I, if, if there's some things that's going wrong in your life, I'm ready to make it over again. Amen. All you got to do is allow yourself. Amen. Let the spirit of God work on the inside of you. Amen. Let God use you. Amen. God can do whatever he wants to do with me, amen, because I believe that I'm God's property, amen. You can't make yourself, because every time you try to make yourself, you make a mistake, amen. But guess what? God don't make no mistakes, amen. amen. No, 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 no. Satan, 
His design and his desire is to steal you, to kill you, to lie to you, to cheat on you, to get you away from God, get you so far away from God that you don't think God cares about you. But I'm here to tell somebody this morning that God loves you, God cares about you, and God is going to hold you in the palm of his hand, and the, hell, and the gates of hell won't be able to stand against you. Amen. You ought to give God some praise this morning. The Bible lets us know that we may be in the world, but we're not of the world because we're shaped by the master potter. Amen? God will move you sometime to a strange place. God will do some things in your life just so he can get your attention. God is talking to you. God told uh, Jeremiah, go down to the potter's house. You know, in other words, go to a place where they're molding and shaping clay. I'm going to show you something. Amen? But let me tell you something. God woke you up this morning and set you on your way. God told Amen. you this morning, go down to the potter's house. That's why you're in Greater Harvest this morning. God sent you here this morning. God said, I'm going to shape you again. Amen. I'm going to mold you and make you new this morning. That's why you're here this morning. You are in the potter's house. Amen. And I was talking to y'all this morning during my announcement. And the first thing I was telling you about, Brother, Brother Ty walked into the church. Brother Ty was here when I was opening up the church doors. Amen. And he was just praising God. He said, I'm so glad I woke up this morning. I said, man, that's a blessing. Amen. Because let me tell you something. Everybody that went to bed last night didn't wake up. Some folks didn't wake up the same way. Some people didn't wake up at all. But I'm so glad that God saw fit to give me another day. And I believe I got some people who know what I'm talking about this morning. You come down to the potter's house this morning, amen? God said, get up and go down to greater harvest. And I'm telling you, I'm ready to reveal my word into your body, into your soul, into your spirit. God says, I'm going to mold you. I'm going to shape you. And I'm going to reshape you. I'm going to remold you. I'm going to renew your spirit. I'm going to renew your continence. I'm going to give you something better than you had before. God is working in your life. You are the clay. God is the potter. The church is the potter's house. God is ready to reshape somebody. It's time for people to start trusting in the master part. Yes, yes, yeah. We serve a God who's willing to keep working with us. Amen. We serve a God who sits high looking low and he cares about his people. He cares about his creation. Amen. Oh man, the world don't want you to know that. But I'm here to tell somebody the potter, well, guess what? You know what the potter's going to do? He's going to look way beyond your faults and see yes. every need that you have. That's enough to give God some praise this morning. The master potter is always willing to give you another chance. The master potter is always ready to renew your spirit. Amen? God told Jeremiah, he said, get up and go to the place where work is being done. Amen. I'm going to show you that what I'm talking about. I'm going to show you the goodness of the Lord. I'm going to show you the power of my spirit. And that's what God will do sometimes. Amen. Somebody woke up this morning thinking that I'm going to just stay home and worship God. Amen. Some of y'all might have had that in your mind this morning. I'm just going to lay here. Amen. I'm going to get a, a, another few weeks this morning. I'm just going to lay here in the bed. But then the Spirit of the Lord just probably told you, said, no, get up. Go down to the potter's house. Then you need to be reshaped this morning. Amen. You see, the devil had marred you this morning to, and had you in such a position that you were so comfortable right where you were this morning. Amen. But the God, the master potter said, no, get up. I'm going to reshape you this morning. Amen. Instead of you lying down in the bed, I'm going to stand you upright. Amen. And you got up with all your aches and pains and you got yourself together. You got dressed and you came down to the potter's house because guess what? The potter's going to reshape you. The potter's going to remold you. The potter's going to make you brand new. Amen. And I don't know about you, but I come here this morning and they've got some pretty The church is the potter's house. Souls are being made over, being molded and reshaped into something new. Amen. You're not going to leave here the same way you came in here, man. You're going to leave out here and you're going to praise God this morning because you know God is good. I know somebody praising God already this morning. Amen. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's why God told you to get up this morning. Say, I can't speak to you in the house you're in this morning. That's not the potter's house. Amen. That's why God said, get up and go into the potter's house. Go down there where my spirit is going to be operating this morning. And the world is spinning you around like a top. But I'm going to mold you and shape you this morning. And not only will I shape you, I will reshape you. Amen. If somebody knock you down, God said, I'm going to pick you up. Amen. If somebody bend you over, God said, I'm going to upright you again. Amen. I'm telling you, you might be down, but you're not out. So I don't want you to give up. Don't you give in. Don't you give out. You keep trusting God. You keep your hands in God's hand. You keep looking up to his gift for what's coming all your help. Because all your help comes from 
comes from God, the master potter. Yes. Amen. He's the master potter. You know, everybody will be willing to go up, to get up and go into the potter's house and hear the word of the Lord. Amen. We get up and do all kinds of things. Amen. We get up and do all kinds of things, baby. But I want you to know that God is still on the throne. Amen. But God is going to get your attention one way or the other. Amen. Amen. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, you got, but let me tell you something. God has said, look, I brought you out before. I'll bring you out again. Thank you. Glory and I don't care what you're going through. You know, you've been going through some things in your life and you think that. But let me tell you something. God is not finished with you. Amen. Amen. And you know, the devil wants you to believe that. You know, if you go through something in your life and you have a rough time. And you, you know, you just think, man, I'm sick and I just don't feel well. You know, and I, I just don't know. And sometimes we've all been at that point where you're so sick, you feel like you're not even going to get well. And everybody in here has been, into, been at that point. If you haven't been there, just keep on living. You won't get to the point where you realize that, man, I feel so bad. I don't know if I'm going to get through this. And all of a sudden, things start to feel a little bit better. And before you know it, you're up, you're walking, you're talking, you feel like your own self again. And you ain't got nobody to think but the grace of God, amen? Because God said, look, you've been marred and, 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 and marred by the things in life and stuff like that. Sometimes sickness and disease will take over your body. But let me say, when you trust in the spirit of the Lord, when the spirit of the Lord comes on and, and start working on it, just like uh, uh, what, the, what the scripture said, that there's something on the inside starts working on the outside. You know, it's like a, a fire that shut up in my bones. I, I got to tell somebody about the goodness of God and man, I know that God is working on the inside of me because God God is the master potter amen? amen God is calling you to potter's house this morning he wants to speak to you this morning amen and, you know Moses had a crew you know and, and, and in his crew God said I gotta reshape a spirit of jealousy and, 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 and sometimes and, and that's what that's what God has to do sometimes amen God was speaking to Moses and he told Moses, he said, Moses, I want you to do this. I want you to go and tell Pharaoh to let my people go. God spoke to Moses and told Moses that. And every step of the way that Moses started to lead the people uh, out of Egypt, every step of the way, God delivered. When they needed water, he brought forth water. When they needed food, God rained down manna from heaven. Amen. When their backs were against the wall, you know, when they found themselves at the Red Sea, God delivered. As a matter of fact, Moses just stood there with his staff and, 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 and he said, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. And all of a sudden, the Red Sea parted and everybody made it across. But let me tell you something. All along the way, when God was speaking to Moses and, and shaping Moses and reshaping Moses and, and allowing Moses to, to, to deliver his word and show, him, show the people the blessings of the Lord, there were people who had the spirit of jealousy inside of them. Amen. Because they couldn't understand what God was doing. And so what, what, what happened was Moses, and, and, and the jealousy was happening in his own family. His brother Aaron and his sister Miriam started thinking to themselves, well, you know, God just can't be talking to Moses. He, he could be talking to me too, you know. It, it, you know the, and, and so they, 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 they conspired against Moses. And then, you know, sometimes people start worried about the, they get worried about the wrong thing. They worry about Moses' wife, who he's married to, or what his wife look like, or he married an Ethiopian, you know. It's it just, it just crazy. That sometimes people are just worried about all the wrong things, and you're worried about the wrong thing so much, you can't see the right thing that God is doing, amen. God is shaping things in your life, amen. And so they got so upset with Moses that, that, that God had to call them into the potter's house. God said, Moses, look, Get your sister Aaron, I mean, get your sister Mary, and get your brother Aaron, come on into the tent. And God had a tent meeting with him. And he brought him into the tent, and he told them, he said, listen, when I spoke to my other prophets, I spoke to them in visions and dreams. But when I spoke to Moses, I spoke to Moses in my mouth to his mouth. In other words, when I put my words into Moses, and that's what, what God is telling all of us today. When God has for you, don't you let nobody turn you around. Don't you let nobody discourage you, amen? Don't you let nobody talk you out of what God is doing in your life, amen? What, you, what God has for you, you're going to get it, amen? I know a lot of times, 
sometimes, sometimes people will say, well, don't let nobody block your blessing and don't you block your own blessing. But let me tell you something. Your hand is not stronger than God's hand. Amen. Amen. Ain't nobody's hand is stronger than God. They can't block your blessing because they're not stronger than God. Amen. All they can do is speak against you. But what God has for you, you're going to get it. you got to allow yourself to be used by God. When yeah. you step into God's house, you know that you're in a master potter's place. You're in a potter's house this morning. And I know that the devil in hell can't stand against you. That's the reason why the Bible tells us that we need to put on what? The whole armor of God that we might be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. I'm here to tell somebody this morning, we're in the potter's house this morning. God is ready to remold you this morning. God is ready to shape you, reshape you, remold you into something new this morning. Somebody give God some praise this morning. You never know how God is going to speak to you. You just got to be with it. You got to have your mind open. You got to allow your spirit to be blessed by God. God is the master potter. The potter is God. The clay is his people. And the wheel is that world that we're in where the world is just turning around. But we're nothing but clay in the master's hand. Amen. And God will sometimes mar and disfigure and distort and even ruin you sometimes. You know, God will do it sometime, just to get your attention. God said, will you trust me if I bend you? God said, will you trust me even if I break you? Because if I break you, guess what? I can make you over again. I know he can, amen? He said, well, will God do that to me? Yeah, he will. If you are his servant, amen? Yeah, think about Moses. I mean, I mean, I mean think about Job. As a matter of fact, God, 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 God allowed. Uh, 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 poor Job to be broken. He allowed Job to be uh, uh, marred. You know, he allowed Job to go. Because the Bible says in the book of Job, Job 1 1 said, There was a man from Uz who was perfect and upright in the sight of God. In other words, Job was perfect. In other words, he was, he was shaped by God, perfectly shaped by God. But then all of a sudden, God allowed him to be marred. That clay got shaken and, 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 and marred by uh, uh, the trials and tribulation of life. Moses, I mean, Jer uh, Job lost everything. His children, his livestock, his money. Then next thing you know, he got sick. You know, the Bible said that he was so sick, man, he, he was like, he looked bad, amen. People came there looking at him, start talking about him, amen. He was marred by the storms of life, and God allowed it to happen. Why? Because he knew how faithful Job was to him. Amen? And he knew, and Job even said it, though he slay me still, I put my trust in him. Amen? And let me tell you something. When you have that kind of spirit, when you allow God to use you, when you allow God, let me tell you something, because everybody want to be used by God, but nobody want to go through the trials. Amen? But Jesus said, if they persecute me, they're going to persecute you too. You got to be ready for this thing. Amen? And so that if, if, if I get marred by, uh, by life, if I get marred and spun around by this, this world that I'm living in, I'm not worried about it because I know that God can step in because he's the master potter. He can make me over, amen? Yeah. He can reshape my hands. He can reshape my mind. He can reshape my spirit. He can reshape my soul, amen? And I trust God, amen? But sometimes God will allow you to go through these things so that your tests can become your testimony. Amen? Amen. 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 You know, you got to go through some things. You know, I've been through the fire. You know, I, I've been through the rain. I've been through the wind. I've been through the storm. Amen? But God said, look, I don't want you to just see it. I want you to be it. Amen? I want you to understand that I'm going to do something new in you. I'm going to, and sometimes God will do that. God said, well, I'm going to get you right where I need you to be. I'm going to take you away from everybody and everything around you. And I'm going to have a little tent meeting with you. I'm just going to talk to you. And you know, you might be going through, sometimes you feel, a, the, 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 you feel some despair. You know, you feel some disappointment. But I'm telling you, if you keep on believing and you keep on trusting God, amen. Yeah. You yeah. keep your hands in God's hands and watch how God start to turn some things around. All of a sudden, you know, I'm, I'm feeling a little bit better about what I'm doing, amen. Now I got a new way to walk, amen. I got a new way to talk, man. And I know that, let me tell you something, it's, it's a kind of a joy that God will, God will reshape you with joy. Anybody know what I'm talking about? God reshape you with joy. And joy is something that the world didn't give you. And guess what? The world can't take it away from you. Amen? Amen. 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 You just hold on and trust God, man. Whatever God brings you to, God is going to bring you through it. Amen? Amen? You just 
trust him, amen? I'm telling you, the master potter can remold you. The master potter can reshape you. And the Bible said that if any man be in Christ, he is a what? A new creature. And, 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 and Christ is that way. God has given us Jesus. And God said, look, God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believe in him shall not perish, but what have eternal life with God. And no matter what you do, the ultimate thing for all of us is to inherit eternal life. Now, how many people in here want to go to heaven? Amen. Everybody know what I mean? The only way for you to get to heaven is for you to die. Mm -hmm. Amen. You're going to have to die. In other words, when you die, and, and some people work like, oh, I don't know, but I got to die. Yeah, you got to die to go to heaven. Everybody want to go to heaven, but nobody want to die. Amen. <laughs> and I said that to somebody one time. I said, well, you know, we all going to die. Well, you know, we all not going to die. What do you mean not going to die? Well, the Bible says that, that, that when Jesus comes back, there's going to be a resurrection. The day that Christ will rise first, and the rest of us will, caught up, will be caught up and meet the Lord in the air. Well, well that's true. But let me tell you something. Flesh and blood can't go into heaven. Amen. Amen. Let me say it. Amen. Flesh. <laughs> don't you now? Don't you get it all wrong? Now, now let me tell you something. You know, because there's a transformation. There's a there's a where well, your body is going to be transformed into something new. And what do I mean by that? Even if you're walking around when Jesus comes back and you're alive, you're going to die, but you're going to be transformed. And in, in other words, what's going to die is this old body is going to yes. die because you can't take this body into heaven. Amen. This goes back into the the earth. But even in that moment, in the twinkling of an eye, you shall be changed. In other words, the, 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 the mortal will put on immortal. In other words, you know, so even if you're alive, you're going to realize it's going to happen in a moment. You know, and, and, and you're going to shed this body. You're going to shed mortality and put on immortality. You, you know, and so that's how fast the master potter works, amen? You know, so you see, you might be thinking that the potter is going to have to put you on a wheel and start spinning you around and start shaping you. When he comes back, it's going to happen in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye. All of a sudden, this old crazy body that you have is going to be transformed into something new. Why? Because you will end up in the master potter's hand. But the only way for you to get there is to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior right now. you got to start believing. Even in Christ. Jesus is the Savior. He's an instrument of God. He's going to allow you to be molded, shaped, reshaped, remolded in the image of God that God meant for you to be. We all trust God. We all believe in the power of God's Holy Spirit. Why? Because God is the master potter. Somebody give God some praise this morning. I'm going to say this, y'all, and i got to get out of here. God is the master potter. And when you're walking through the valley of the shadow of death, when you're standing at your Red Sea, when you're standing at your River Jordan, when you're standing up against the wall of Jericho, when they throw you into the lion's den, when they cast you into the fiery furnace, when, they have been, when you have been marred by the trial, the tribulation of life, I'm telling you, all you have to do is rise up Go down to the potter's house. The Bible said, the potter said that behold the clay that you are, you are in the hands of the master potter. Go down and do what thus say the Lord. Uh, the Bible said that the wheel of the potter goes round like season. And I'm here to tell somebody, you might be going through a season right now. But don't you be discouraged because when you're going through a season, seasons change. I'm here to tell somebody, God is the master potter. And the season that we know the Bible said there's a season for everything in the potter's hand. There's a time to be born in the potter's hand. There's a time to die in the potter's hand. There's a time to heal in the potter's hand. There's a time to weep in the potter's hand. There's a time to laugh in the potter's hand. There's a time to mourn in the potter's hand. There's a time to dance in the potter's hand. There's a time for love in the potter's hand. There's a time for peace in the potter's hand. I'm here to tell somebody, just like Job, we're the clay in the potter's hand, uh, fashioned and molded. But God said, even if I destroy you, I'm going to pick you up and reshape you again. I'm going to make you over. And if you're going through it, don't you worry about going through anything. Because God did what God did for Job, he'll do it for you. You'll get double for your trouble. Remember, Remember, God is the master potter. He won't lead you to when he can't bring you through. Somebody give God some praise this morning. He's the master potter. 
The Bible said that the vessel that was made of clay was marred in the hands of the potter. Marred! So he made another vessel. And it seemed good to God. God is saying the same thing to you this morning. I'm ready to make you over. And sometimes he's just going to do that sometimes in some of our lives. Sometimes we're just on the wrong path. Sometimes we're just making all the wrong choices. Sometimes we're just doing all the wrong things. And it's wrong and we know it. Sin is like that. Sin can feel so good and you can do it for so long, you think it's right. Because it'll feel good. But you've been marred. And the potter is ready to make you over, to reshape you again. He'll make you new. He'll make you whole. You just got to trust him. So let's do this. Let's pray. And I know everybody needs the Lord operating in their lives. But we're in the potter's house this morning. And we come into the place where prayers can be heard, where blessings can come down. And in this house, in this sanctuary, in this potter's house, and right where you are, if you're watching me right now, YouTube, YouTube, Facebook, GentileGreaterHarvest.com, our website, right where you are, the potter is ready to make you over again. He's ready to reshape your life. So let us pray together. Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your kindness. And Lord, I ask you right now that you would touch every life, every single person that hears my voice right now, God. I pray that your healing spirit will touch them right now, God. Touch their mind, touch their body, touch their soul, touch their spirit, God. Whatever they need, in every avenue of their life. I pray, God, that you will be there, that you will touch them with your Holy Spirit. Heal their bodies. Bring into their lives peace, joy, love, prosperity. God, I pray that not only will you bless them, God, but you will bless the families that they represent. I pray, God, that you will touch them from the sole of their feet to the crown of their head, God. God, I know there's somebody right now that's going through something. You're going through something right now. You're laying on a sick bed and you don't think that you're going to be healed. But I want to encourage you this morning. You're in the hands of the Master Potter. And in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray that God will touch you right now. That God will heal your body. That God will take away everything that afflicts you right now. That you will feel his spirit. That you will feel his presence right now. In the name of Jesus. I speak healing in your life. In Jesus name. We pray. Amen. Come on and give God some praise. Bless the Lord.